a superior race. He just loves that he's a terrorist. He thinks it's great. Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another video. We post content daily, so consider giving this episode a thumbs up, join the notification squad by subscribing and hitting that bell notification on, but also, don't forget to comment down below saying I subscribed to enter our monthly shoutout and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Hope you enjoyed the video. After more than two decades on the air, it is hard to imagine daytime television without Phil McGraw, who has been offering help and support to people for 16 years. However, not every guest appearing on his show is ready to accept help, and some people are not even ready to admit they have a problem. This has occasionally led to some pretty uncomfortable situations for both the people on the stage and the viewers in the studio, and in today's video we will take a look at 5 Dr. Phil moments that had the audience in awe. We'll jump right in with a young woman named Riley who appeared on the Dr. Phil show a few years back. She called herself a professional sugar baby, meaning she would befriend rich older men and keep them company in exchange for money. But things got a lot more awkward when her mother was introduced and explained how her daughter was teaching her how to be a sugar baby as well. Riley's mom recalled an incident where the two had stripped down to their underwear and whipped a man for half an hour in exchange for 300 bucks, and although she admitted that it had been pretty awkward, she still said she was proud of her daughter for being a businesswoman who makes her own money and calls the shots. For the viewers on the other hand, watching mother and daughter all dolled up and talking about their cooperative adventures evoked a lot of feelings that definitely had nothing to do with pride. Romina Garcia was surely one of the most controversial guests Dr. Phil ever had, as she vehemently defended domestic abuse. The then 18-year-old had originally posted a video on social media defending abuse and saying that she believed it was a sign of true love since the abuser was potentially risking to go to jail for their actions. As she explained to Dr. Phil, not everyone will go to jail for you and the fact that someone is willing to potentially put in a lot of time and money meant that they must truly love you. My boyfriend gave me a black eye. It was my While Garcia said that she felt like she was an inspiration to younger girls, Dr. Phil told her that he normally wouldn't give her a platform for her more than infuriating opinion, but that he was worried that the idiotic message she was putting out there could cause young girls to put themselves in danger simply by following her twisted logic. Getting to go home and be the same Courtney. When Courtney was a sophomore, she asked me if I would take her to get birth control. I was 15 when I first had sex. It's some scumbag. In January 2012, 17-year-old Courtney appeared on the Dr. Phil show because her parents were at their wit's end with her out-of-control behavior and we soon understood what they meant. Everyone has a trigger, but while it takes a lot for most people to get to that point of rage, it seemed like this teenager was ready to explode if anyone so much as breathed around her. It's not that all the time. Sometimes I get angry because I'm hurt or I feel disrespected, but sometimes I just get angry like out of nowhere and I'll just like... Courtney had a quite long record from junior high and high school with 7 suspensions, 47 disciplinary referrals, 11 incident reports, 5 alternative school assignments, and 3 disciplinary notices. The list included several fistfights and one incident where Courtney had punched the principal in the face because he tried to wake her up when she was sleeping in class, which resulted in the police picking her up from school and putting her in a holding cell, but not before she managed to bite the police officer. I was a major bully. I would make people fall in the hallways. I would throw books at people. I was just rude. Last year, Courtney was finally expelled from school. Courtney has been put in an alternative school. The 17-year-old was a perfect example of a really bad bully and was proud of that. She would regularly torment random people because she didn't like them, including one disabled student whose mouth she taped shut. Courtney had also stolen $5,000 from her parents, punched her mom and threatened to slit her throat, cut her tongue out, burn the house down and kill the rest of the family in their sleep. I took ecstasy that night and I drank two bottles of vodka and I drank a 24 pack of beer and I smoked like three blunts of marijuana. The teenager also told Dr. Phil that she had taken ecstasy, gotten drunk and smoked marijuana several times, and even woken up without clothes the next day on one occasion, thinking that she had been raped, which prompted her to ask her mom for the morning after pill. Everything, she, are, you like, are you like amazingly attractive? Well, yeah, I am pretty and, you know, I have a lot of friends and, you know, I'm just, I'm just amazing. 
Dr. Phil was obviously shocked by Courtney's behavior and everything else he had heard about her, but decided to give her and her family another chance by offering to send the 17-year-old to Turnabout Ranch. Although Courtney's reaction was really hostile, she didn't really have a say in the matter as it was still her parents' decision until she would turn 18 and thus be of legal age. There are a lot of things that can tear a family apart, and in this guest's case it was racism. A young woman named Peyton came to Dr. Phil looking for help because her dad didn't want to accept her biracial grandson. Peyton's dad is part of the White Knights, the most violent and hateful part of the KKK, who had served nine years in prison for manufacturing bombs to blow up an abortion clinic among other things. Say white power, hail Hitler, he throws Nazi symbols up and I didn't understand. According to Peyton, her father has called her child critter, monster and ape and told her to abort the baby when he found out she was pregnant with a half-black child because he thinks the Aryan race is superior. In his words, his grandson is not human because with just one drop of non-white blood, a baby ceases to be human. My dad believes that the white man is the superior race. He just loves that he's a terrorist. He thinks it's great. Growing up a daddy's girl, Peyton now felt like her father had abandoned her while he stated that she will always be his daughter but that she had betrayed him and would have never thought she would grow up to become a ghetto thug. No one would have ever thought that she would have grown up to be a ghetto thug. This was definitely one of the most sickening and heartbreaking stories in the show and it left the audience outraged. Earlier this year, a really spoiled 15-year-old and her mother sought help from Dr. Phil for very different reasons. While mother Nina Gray said that her daughter is a spoiled monster that she can't control anymore, daughter Nicolette wrote to TV's most famous shrink so he would make her mother understand that she grew up living a certain lifestyle and that lowering her monthly allowance from $5,000 to just $1,000 was simply impossible and she just couldn't deal with it. Since her mother was constantly working and never driving her places or buying, let alone preparing her food, Nicolette insisted that a $2,500 allowance was the absolute minimum she could accept. Another thing that she insisted she really needed was a Mercedes G-Class for her upcoming 16th birthday, while her mother was only willing to give her a C-Class. Phil McGraw pointed out that $231,000 was an exorbitant amount to spend on a car, but Nicolette just didn't seem to understand why that would be foolish seeing as she really wanted her G-Wagon. The show host then told Nina that he was worried about Nicolette's self-image, but that it wasn't too late to turn things around and reparent. Surprisingly, daughter Nicolette agreed with him, at least until the point when she heard what this would mean for her. In order to redefine their relationship, Dr. Phil suggested that Nina give her daughter more love and less money, which prompted the 15-year-old to say that it was too late for that and she didn't really want her mother's love anymore. But things got even worse for the poor spoiled child when the show host said that five, two and a half or even one thousand dollars was an insane amount to give to a teenager every month, which Nicolette remarked that she was just barely living in the 1k that her mother was currently giving her. However, Dr. Phil went even further, saying that Nicolette should find herself a job in order to see what she can accomplish and to build up her self-esteem and change her self-image. Nicolette was convinced that a job was the last thing she needed, especially since a minimum wage wouldn't get her the G-Wagon anytime soon, but with tears in her eyes, she had to listen to Dr. Phil and her mother agreed that getting a job was a good start. We had obviously all been waiting for Nicolette to crack, but it still came as kind of a shock when she started whining, as well as crying like a toddler when Dr. Phil suggested volunteering some more at the soup kitchen. Her mother recalled her experience of earning some extra bucks with babysitting in her age, while the show host pointed out that a job in the world was what Nicolette needed. When the poor girl heard this, she jumped up from her chair saying that she didn't want a job because, guess what, it's so much work. While the audience and Dr. Phil couldn't help but laugh at this, her mother apparently decided not to change a thing after the show and Nicolette is now driving her second G-Wagon, as we learn from her YouTube channel, which has already amassed over 460,000 subscribers in the past 3 months. Thank you for checking this video out and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again thank you for watching and see you next time.